Hello, welcome back to the Cisco Secure Cloud Native Security Spot On Series. My name is Emmick Nicholas and I'm a cybersecurity architect with Cisco Systems. And today we're going to be talking about provisioning the infrastructure using infrastructure as code. The Cloud Native Security Spot On Series is a multi-part series. So today we're going to be talking about provisioning the infrastructure, next week security analytics, the week after that workload protection, and so on and so on. So in today's agenda, what we're going to be discussing is setting up the dev environment. So we have to set up GitHub and our Jenkins pipeline and all that stuff. We have to have the, the right tools to actually execute on Jenkins to make this work. We're going to go through the infrastructure as code, how it's all laid out and the configurations and all that. And then we're going to do a deployment using GitOps. So just, just an overview of the architecture. So we're deploying this up in AWS. We're going to be using EKS for all our applications. That's where our applications will be hosted. And we're going to use Cisco Secure Cloud Native Solutions to secure that web. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up the environment. Things like Terraform, Ansible, GitHub, CTL, so on and so on. We kind of talked about this in the overview, but we'll go in and actually set it up right now. So what we have today is we have a GitHub repo called Cloud Native Security Spot On Series. You guys will have access to this so you can clone and fork or do whatever you want with. But in this repo, as you'll see, I have a main branch and I have an infra branch. So my main branch is my prod branch. So this is what we're going to be merging our code into and actually using this branch to do our deployments. The infra branch is, let's say, a feature branch. And this is where we're configuring the features. So each part that we do in the spot on series will be a feature. And today we're doing infrastructure, so we have an infra branch. The next thing we want to do is we want to configure our Jenkins pipeline. So we go to our Jenkins dashboard and we click on no. And we'll call this, let's say, yeah, we already have it, spot on, we'll call it. And we're going to use a multi branch pipeline. Click OK. And we'll give it a display name. Let's say spot on again. And then we're going to say we're going to add branch sources. So we'll go into Git. We'll go in here and get our URL and add it. So this is what we're going to be using for our source. Um, I'm going to use my access token. We're going to discover all the branches. Um, and all the branches are going to have the same properties. The build configuration is going to be defined by our Jenkins file. So our pipeline is code, and I'll go through that in a second. We also want to you know, scan our branches, let's say for now, every one minute, and then we make a change. So I go in here, and I click Save, and it's going to go out, and it's going to say, OK, look, I found some branches here, but I didn't find a Jenkins file in there. That's because we didn't commit our code yet. So I see two branches, I see main, and I see infra, but I got nothing to do because I have no code in there. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is go over to our code. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at our Jenkins file. And just to kind of explain what's going on in our Jenkins file, we have pipeline, which defines the Jenkins file. We have an agent, and in this case it's any agent, so we're just using the master agent on the Jenkins master host. Um, we have some environment variables, we have stages, and we have steps within the stages. So if we start with the environment variables, um, these environment variables were set and some are static here and some are credentials. So like for AWS and our secret keys and our usernames and anything that we want to keep secure, if we go back in to Jenkins, and I go to Dashboard, Manage Jenkins, oh my gosh, I need an update, uh, and we go to Manage Credentials. I define all my credentials here in Jenkins securely. And this way, the pipeline will be able to now utilize them secure credentials within the pipeline. It'll, it'll pass them variables along. The second thing we have is our stage. So we have a build stage. And in this build stage, it says, uh, if the branch is main, and in the change log, so when I do the commit and I have to add in the commit message, 
If I, it says deploy EMV anything else, then it's going to run these steps. And in these steps, I have my Terraform init, my Terraform apply, and then I have all these variables that I'm passing. Right? So these variables are pretty much the same environment variables that I'm setting here. And then also I'm getting from Jenkins for my credentials. And I'm passing it to Terraform, as you can see. So I have my AWS keys. I have my regions. I have my FTD username and password. Um, so we have, we have all these variables that we're set. And then I also have a destroy stage. So this is basically just to tear everything down. It's just the opposite of what we're doing here. Instead, in the change in the commit change log, if I'd say destroy environment, it, it will actually run a Terraform destroy. Then let's take a look at some other code. So I have a main.tf that provides a module. So within a module, think of this in like any other programming language uh, as a function. Right? So I have I have code that I don't want to duplicate or repeat. And I want to pass arguments or variables to that code over and over again. So for instance, why would we use this in Terraform? Well, in this case, we're just deploying one prod infrastructure. But let's say we were deploying a dev, a QA, a test, and then a prod. Well, we would want the configuration of the environment to be exactly the same. But we would want the variables to be different, different IP addresses, maybe different um, regions or zones or whatever. Right? So we're going to change that stuff, but the code will be exactly the same. And then we also set our Terraform providers in this file. We also have some variables here that we have to set. These are the same exact variables that we're passing. We're just defining them in Terraform. And then going back to the main, we have the module itself. So as we source this module from modules.infrastructure, let's take a look here and see what the actual code is for infrastructure. So I have code for VPCs. I have code for uh, an FTD. I have code for EKS. Um, and then I also have a variables file and a main file for this module itself. So as you can see here, we have some variable files within the module. Um, and some of these variables are being passed by Jenkins, and some of these variables are, you know, different, right? So I have like subnets and, and sizes of instances and remote hosts and all that type of stuff. And these are just default variables. We can pass these variables uh, in um, via Jenkins or via wherever. Um, and they and we can change these defaults, but um, these defaults are just going to be deployed no matter what if we don't um, pass anything on top of them. Uh, so that we have the variable file. And then we have the, the configuration of the FTD itself. So we have this thing called FTD Ansible Deploy. And what this does is, is it deploys the Ansible playbooks within a Docker container on the Jenkins host itself. So as you see, um, it's a local provisioner and what it says is, hey, we're gonna do a Docker run and we're gonna pass these playbooks um, to this uh, Docker image um, and then uh, we're gonna run it, right? So it actually deploys the Ansible playbook inside the Docker container um, that was built by Cisco DevNet, which is awesome. And then we have the three playbooks that we're running. So these Ansible playbooks are here we have an Ansible status, we have an Ansible uh, provisioning, uh, and then we have a configuration. So uh, the status is basically just going out, making sure that the, FT, the FTD management API is available so we can, we can build the configuration. The initial, the initial provisioning is to allow us to go through the end user license agreement, add like, you know, a license, that type of stuff. All the click throughs that you have on the initial screen when you spin a FTD up. And then we have the actual configuration. So, you know, this is our, our interfaces, our security zones, our objects, you know, our network objects, our service objects, our, our NAT objects. We have, you know, uh, configure ACLs. We have uh, IPS configurations. We have, you know all that all that goodness that that firepower gives us that 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 gets deployed all right here. So now that we've gone through all the infrastructure as a code, it's it's time to deploy it. Um, don't forget to go out and subscribe to the Spot On Series YouTube channel so you can get 
all cool sessions that we have on Spot On as well as this one.